Hello and welcome back to the Talking Wars podcast. I'm your host, Matt Cooper, and today I'm joined by Dave as a party. Dave, how are you keeping, mate? Nice uh, England jump you've, you've got on there. You're ready for Qatar? I, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of internationals, but I just did that, had to do like a sponsored World Cup thing. So uh, I thought I'll put, I'll put this on here. It's comfy. I think I'll wear it to the fan park we're going to next week anyway. So. You might want to clarify Other than that, it. I am all good. Yeah. I mean, international football. So yeah, I'm not, nah, <laughs> yeah. I much prefer... <laughs> <laughs> I watch don't like internationals football. No, international football yeah, so, yeah I mean I'm foreign football. myself so yeah <laughs> I can't be racist I'm foreign myself <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm all good thank you good man good Finn how you doing mate I'm good I love internationals um, no but yeah international. I'm the, I'm the same um, I'm not fussed on England stuff but I've, I've grabbed myself a jumper as well I should have put it on sorry we, this is going to be the last one before Christmas isn't it Probably, Probably, maybe. I don't know. No, we've got the cup game, maybe. I don't know. See, I'll wear one if we squeeze one in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Festive spirit. Nothing like Christmas, like Gillingham. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that game already. I'm the same. I don't mind England, but I don't feel like I'm gripped by this World Cup at all. I think at the timing of it and all the kind of who hard that surrounds it, it's just, I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't feel too right. But I'm sure when it's on, it's nice having football on in the day, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you're in your, when you work when you're working and you got your second screen on, you know, game, a few games of football. So yeah, it's nice. No, it's no, no <laughs> it's good. people are aware we've listened to this. So obviously, when I book <laughs> annual leave, um, but no, George this week he's still sunning himself in Antigua. But saying that, like the pictures he put up, it looks it looks quite overcast. <laughs> I don't know if you boys put the same weather. It looks a bit shit. So I hope it picks up for I him. I asked him. He said it, it's a bit better now. I think. I think last week it was a bit grey, wasn't it? So. Mm. Um, we'll Serves him right for leaving us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be sat on the sunbeds, uh, but it, it probably is our, our last podcast for, for 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 a little while. Hopefully, this, we'll have some juicy gossip to talk about during the international period. Uh, we've got a tag. They're, they're doing warm weather training camp as well, aren't they, Dave in Marbella? So, I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wonder if we can get access for that. That'd be nice. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it. Uh, I, we... I would go to be fair. I'm, but, I'm yeah. me, I'm me. I mean, if you had a chance before, we probably don't have it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'd probably get access. For it. Yeah, you got an exclusive interview with Dexter Lembakisa. Oh, yeah, so fucking ass saying she did it before. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what they'd say. But oh, lads, let's um, let's get straight into it. We're talking about the Leeds game, the Arsenal game, won't be a game to preview. Um, but Dave's also spoken to Tom Warren from the Wolves Foundation as the modern new sleep out is approaching. And of course, we'll take your questions. But Dave, Wolves versus Leeds in the Carabao Cup, finally a win and a, a goal in front of the South Bank. I bet you thought he'd never come. I know. And it was a good finish as well by uh, Booba Carr. Came on and sort of had a really positive effect on the game. You know, I was I was happy to see a fairly strong team. Obviously, the ro- a bit of rotation in, in the midfield, and I support, suppose that's one of the pros of the Steve Davis um, sort of era at Wolves is that he's mm. given the opportunities to a lot of younger players that probably wouldn't have had a chance under Bruno Lage. We saw Joe Hodge uh, a lot more. We've seen obviously little glimpses of, glimpses of Conor Rona. He's not had a huge amount of chances. Hugo Bueno, um, but yeah, the, it, it, it wasn't a great game of football. It wasn't a classic. Um, but to get a win felt nice, and it was a, obviously a great finish from Bubakar. And you look at the draw now; a couple of teams that have drawn each other. We've got Gillingham. I'm not saying we're going to go and win it, but there's a massive chance we could go into the semi-finals. And I think in a two-legged tie, anything is possible. I think we could do a Birmingham City and win the cup and go down. <laughs> Would you Maybe. take that? Would you take oh, that? No. Oh. no, no. I'd rather stay in the Premier League than win. <laughs> Yeah, the but, Mickey Mouse trophy if we go out, I am a... Yeah, but you're not saying that when you're on Wembley Way and you're winning it. Imagine no, imagine that you've playing Blackpool on a Saturday, and then on the Thursday you're going to like I don't know, like Punic, Getafe or some shit. I, I don't know, <laughs> like you know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. That's just mad, though, isn't it? Yeah. One seaside to another. Getafe is probably in the middle of Spain as well, so I don't know. I've, I've, I've I think it's, no, the, Getafe the is Madrid, 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 where I think. So they're probably bottom of the, the La Liga as well. So I've completely copped it. Well, I don't know. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, they're actually fifteenth, so not too far, but they are. Yeah, they're mid, mid, Madrid based. But um, mm. I think where's a better night out? Oh, uh, true. Getafe. Not Blackpool because you shit all. And no <laughs> offense to anyone who's listening, who's a who's a Wolves fan from Blackpool. I'm sure you're 
agree. The strip is anyway. my mother. Well, oh yeah, Laws. My yeah. Is your Laws is from Blackpool, isn't she? Yeah, Blackpool, massive. Is she a Blackpool fan? Was I think it's half Blackpool, half Liverpool, and now obviously forced to be to be Wolves. What's Andrew, that? Andrew, bastard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finn, what did you make of the, the game uh, against Leeds? I thought it was pretty poor, to be honest. Yeah, very scrappy. Um, I don't know whether it's because I like I don't film on a personal level. I don't film the cup games as well, so I like I just sort of had like half an eye on it as well. It was like nothing was going on those first few minutes when Leeds really um, flew forward. I thought I was going to sound like a genius from what I said on the podcast, where it did look like we could just loop the ball over. Um, but they sort of calmed that down after those first few chances in the first five minutes. Um, and then, yeah, very, very scrappy. And it, even the goal, it, it was a good goal. But even when you look at it, you're like, where's the keeper there? I know it's he's come over to cover that side. But it was, yeah, it's strange all round. But as you say, with those, it's just um, get the win, get through. And now we're looking, without jinxing it, looking like another round through as well. And then we start to think, yeah, are we going to do a Birmingham? So it was more of a job done than a really impressive win. But I think in the position we're in, you take any type of win. They're in good form as well. I know they've... Um... Mm. Or that, or that they were. Did they play? They played the way they lost, didn't they? They lose at the weekend. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, like two late goals, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but they were, before coming into the game, they were in really good form. But they did make quite a lot of changes. Finn, you said they're about filming. How come you uh, haven't uploaded recently? Is it just because of shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I film. I film like every game. Like I, yeah. we get stuff in the can. Yeah, and then it's like, who is going to watch? Uh, What's a really dead result recently? Like we just lose one nil away. If we got smashed like seven nil, there's a video in it. Do you know what I mean? Like it'd be funny, (laughs) but we just we just lose we just lose like one nil. Or yeah, what we had two one nil. Have we won two games this season? Southampton Forest is that it? Forest Leeds. Leeds. Oh yeah, in the end of the league. Preston. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So half the games we've won, I wasn't filming because of the cup. But yeah, yeah, don't worry. I think I, I mean I said. After Nuno went, I said, well, at least it will score more goals and it'll get more entertaining. There was a few good games last year, entertainment-wise. Um, and then this year, yeah, we don't talk about it. But maybe it's a fresh start after the World Cup and we can actually have some entertaining to watch. Someone came up to me a, ga- a game like two weeks ago and was like, oh, I only watch you when we win. I was like, sound. That, well, good job pretty, turning it pretty, pretty, fair, <laughs> pretty fair analysis. I was like, yeah, that seems, that seems to make sense. Um, unless we go down an Arsenal fan TV route, yeah, there's not much success in... Um, in Wolves, unless I start losing my mind, but it's just not, it's not me. The AFTV routes changed completely though, like I was speaking Oh yeah, the original, yeah. Last week, and I, I know they're trying to, well, they managed to weed out all the characters that were once <laughs> like DT, and and mm. that DT video, by the way, most of it's a load of bollocks um, from, for, from, from sources unknown, Uncle Robbie. Um, <laughs> but Dave, just uh, that midfield three, Hodge, Neves and Ronan, what do you make of that? I thought I thought Hodge and Ronan actually did a decent job. To be fair, yeah, Hodge, Hodge's work rate is is really good, um, and I think that will get him quite far. And 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 this is to be fair, this is one of the things that Scott Sellers will never get praised for, but yeah. he should is he's picking out of young players because Scott Sellers would have been the person that got Joe Hodge, Harvey Griffiths in the twenty one, yeah, twenty ones. Um, the goalkeeper Louis Molden, um, you know, there's a few players there, and he would have picked them out himself because of his connections from Manchester City. Uh, and Joe Hodge obviously was unfortunate with injuries last year, but since he's come back to fitness, he's been unbelievable. And I know Tim Spears joked about it, uh, didn't he, on our end of season podcast last season, um, because Joe Hodge had gone through a little decent run of form, but it shows you know how quick he's risen. And we saw in the Lopetegui behind the scenes first day video as well. Like, I'm sure we'll talk about that more later, but obviously he said to Hodge how well he played the day before uh, or, the, you know, a couple of nights before. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I was a fan of it. You know, if we'd lost, I'm sure there would have been more, you know, people moaning about it because it wasn't our strongest midfield free. But it's given a chance to two young players that have obviously worked hard, been patient and, you know, took their chance to a degree. I've been watched that Lopetegui video and he said he played well. I think Joe Hodge is going to be one of those players who lets his football do the talking because <laughs> he was just like... Oh, mate, it was dead awkward, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I like... I mean, I'd, I'd rather him perform well than, than be a character, but I like to see players with a bit of character. 
Like even Sasha was quite talkative, to be fair. Kalibus, Sasha seems like the nicest bloke on the planet. Yeah. Like he's just happy to get be involved. Like he's mm. happy he's been picked. But even like like Gedge looked miserable, which I think that's just him. Um but I like I like the way that he, he spoke about like having respect, like big respect for you all. And he said, no, knows what's your shoulder, and then put it back Slapped out for it. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so he couldn't go. Um yeah. But he do, I mean, he seems like a bloke who just oozes class and confidence as Lapategi, but I'm sure we'll come on to that a bit later. But I think Kilman and Collins started at the back and I think it's important for them to keep getting game time to try and, you know, get that confidence back and strengthen that partnership. But especially Collins, he struggled again, I thought, against yeah, the, it's the young lad. Yeah. Yeah, since I, and you're saying about um, Hodge there as well, you'd say Kilman's come through and been right through the Wolves Academy and been quite quiet. Whether that's, I don't know, like nature or nurture, whether we're picking these players that are just head down, get on with their football. Um, then again, you've had players like Morgan come through, but I suppose he's been shipped out as soon as he jumps on TikTok or whatever. But as for performances on the pitch with uh, with Kilman, yeah, probably the better of the two, but still not massively convinced. I think early on in the season when there was, I mean, there was great statistics, like we were the best. Um, defense was it shortly before the Man City game, mm. um, but still never fully, fully been convinced that they're like a really compatible two. I think when you put them in a three, which we'll probably talk about later, it's gonna bump them like make them both look a lot better. But you've got a partnership there for if you got it right another 10 years, so we are gonna have to take the sort of teething problems, I suppose. And that is the uh, the disadvantage to like buying young and trying to sell you have to take their mistakes. And yeah, they're not looking completely assured. and I think we're used to sturdiness at the back, aren't we, as, as Wolves fans in the last five, six years. Mm. Um, and it's it's tough with a team like Leeds when you've just got players flying at you. But yeah, just more of the same from them two, really. But whether we do go to a, a five or they've got another solid month now on the training pitch together with neither Ireland haven't made it, have they, to the World Cup? No. no. So he's they've got yeah, they've got time together now. So hopefully it starts to get slightly better. Yeah, I mean Collins is still only twenty one. People forget that. Mm. Um, and Kilman, although he's twenty five, is still fairly inexperienced as a as a, as a professional footballer. But mm. I th- we know that though, and I think that probably should be addressed. Like I know you say, it's, you know, you might have to go for the teething problems. But how how much do you, how off like for how long do you persevere with those teething problems mm. before it comes they're just not compatible? Right. Yeah, um, I feel like we might be at that point. You know, I was talking about um, uh, who's the lad from. Um, from West Ham, the defender who we were talking about last week, who we nearly signed. Dawson. Uh, Dawson. Dawson. Craig Dawson. Yeah, I said, like, I think he's class. You see the penalty he gave right the weekend? No, <laughs> I didn't like, see it. I've not seen Oh, he just kicked it up in the air. Is that the one thought, that Zaha missed? Uh, yeah. Would yeah, it? Zaha missed. Yeah, yeah. minus <laughs> yeah. on my FPL. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so he just, <laughs> he just like, kicked it up in the air and I was like, oh, this is like, this is our fault, this is. Um, <laughs> but it's that, it's that right-hand side again. It's Nick Dave. Johnny went off injured, looked like he was running in concrete again. It's 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 a real concern. I, I even said the same to AF TV when we spoke last week. I said that right hand side for us, it doesn't matter who seems to play there, it's just it's problem after problem, and both of their goals came from there. But it was the same against Leeds, I thought. Yeah, um, I thought Johnny was slightly better. Um, but it's down down I'm trying to think. I think every goal seems to keep coming from down that side. We're having real, we're having real issues. I thought, you know, we'll come on to the Arsenal game. I thought Samedo had a better, better game against Arsenal. Obviously, mm. had an absolute disaster class against Brighton. It couldn't have got any worse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about Johnny. We got tagged in something by Sport Bible yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, and they did a list of all the underrated players in each team, and they'd put Max Kilman and honourable mention Johnny. I thought, right, you know, who on earth has written day, this? Yeah. yeah, I was like, who on earth has written this? So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was a shame to see him come off injured, to be fair, but still not quite the Johnny that we've uh, we've seen in recent times. I, I'm i going to start stop praising for players because it's the same happened with Dawson at the weekend, the same happened at the start of the season for Johnny when we went for 4-4-2. Four, four, I said, he's our, probably our most underrated player. I'm just going to stop saying players underrated because ever since everyone just seems to be dropping stinkers. But yeah. it, I suppose he was a little bit better. But it, it's just I don't know. I don't know how you. I don't know how you fix that because what? Well, because Collins plays on the was Collins right. playing on the left or the right? Playing the right. right. Yeah. 
I so, think the issue is as well when you're and I saw this predominantly. What was the game before the Brighton game? Mm-hmm. When obviously Samedo, you want your fullbacks to push on. When Samedo was attacking, obviously Collins would come across and support, and sort of Samedo as he comes back would tuck into the right centre back role. But Collins one on one defending down the byline is absolutely atrocious. Yeah, and I don't. Then I'm thinking, well. I, would, I wanted to say, actually, he's only a good defender, but surely a good defender would be able to stop that sort of stuff. And he's getting beat down the byline. And it happened, the winning goal for Brighton and the goals against Arsenal were a very similar thing as well, where he's dived in and, you know, or he gets beaten down the byline. It's just, for me, quite, for a Premier League defender, it should be quite basic to defend that sort of stuff. I don't know what players going past you at certain speeds, though. Like, I'd imagine once he gets going, he's quite quick, but. It's, it's like that, a stop start thing when it's like a stand. Yeah, they stand him up and still. go past him. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Which any good winger will do anyway because they can they can stop in the low center of gravity. Whereas obviously he's, a, he's an absolute unit. But mm. I really, I really hope he does turn it around now because I do think there's a player in there, and I, I, such at the start, I liked what I saw. I liked what I saw at Burnley last year. I know Jord will echo those thoughts as well. He was the one kind of. Um, saying we should sign him in, in the summer and eventually we did but he did do well for the goal though he was he was the one thing who, who won the ball, won the ball back gave it to Ben Ents and then um Trey Ray scored that screamer it's a lovely move wasn't it yeah i think the i'd probably praise Pedents the most in that move in that it was finally a ball aiming for someone um which hasn't we haven't really done that much this season it was clever yeah and um I don't think I think I saw someone put this on Twitter as well. I think he's our only winger at the moment that sees that. I albeit eight out of the ten times he doesn't get it right or he tries to rainbow flick whatever scorpion <laughs> kick it to him. True. Um so you take the rough with the smooth with him, but you do get gems like that. Um and then yeah, it was uh, it was good from Collins and, and Treore as well. Um but yeah, good move from those three. But the yeah, Pedence is the is the star there for that one? In what was a pretty simple move, but as I say, uh, beggars can't be choosers at the moment. It's a, a nice goal for us, which is very rare. Mm. Great finish from Troy right though, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I think, like Finn said earlier, I think the goalkeeping from Joel uh, it Robles was a bit Robles, was a bit yeah. suspect. Um, but yeah, top finish. Just got a you know nice height, nice power, and uh, well deserved for Troy Ray because even mm. again in the Arsenal game, I think he's, since he's broken in to the first team. I think he's been a standout performer and probably one of the first names on the team sheet at the minute. I said this on um, after the game on Saturday. It, I think it's telling of a, of a player, and I know he's young and probably fearless, but when a team is low on confidence, not doing well, and you have a player who's always wants to get on the ball and always wants to be positive and go forward, and that's him, and he doesn't shy away from it. And I think that has the hallmarks of a, of a fantastic player. And, you know, credit to to Wolves and, and scouting department who've, who've, who've brought him in because I know he's on loan, but what, what's the fee about 8 million, 10, 11 million, million think, yeah, yeah. Mm. which looks a steal. He looks, he, he, I know, he's, he's still raw and got, got to kind of smooth him out a little bit, but I thought against Leeds, he was good when he came on and against Arsenal, he was, he was, our, I think he's probably say our best player. Um, but he's, yeah, looks, looks a re- really good player, but into the next round now, Finn against Gillingham. On the 20th of December, Lopetegui's first game in charge of Wolves at home. You think the place will be rocking? I think it should be. I think a lot of people will be chomping at the bit to get in. Yeah, it's a nice start for him. Um, it's, it's one of those, do you go full strength just to get that that good Ooh. feeling like, and keep it going? I think you do. you still got them, what, like six? Well, as full strength as we can, you may not have uh, Neves, Sar, etc. depending on how far Portugal look, go. But if you look at the unrest in the camp there, I don't think so um, at the moment. So... Um, yeah, I think you go full strength. You try and pack out the place, which you, you might just be able to do on that on that sort of hype train. Um, and yeah, touch wood, um, it should be a nice, easy start. And even, I mean, he hasn't taken charge. And I think the best atmosphere was before the Arsenal game with him doing that lap. Um, so it's all on him now. He's, he's been, even on all the social media, it's like this guy is the saviour. Um, so hopefully he can deliver. I mean, Gillingham are in the bottom three in League Two, so oh, wow. imagine if we lose, man. Yeah, and they'll, they'll still be playing though the majority of the games, I'd imagine. So they could turn it around. Yeah, we but, had this discussion yeah. in with you the other week. So football, your football league not having a break, they're carrying on. But league One and League Two are carrying on, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. Sad. Um, 
But I, I think I think it's a really good opportunity, especially the teams who are, who are left. There's a couple of big ties in there as well. So would you, I mean, do you, would you prioritise a cup run, Dave? I think you've got to. And I think you, you've got six ga- six days until the next match as well. Yeah, it's not I mean. like it's, you know, uh, a couple of days away. So you might have players like him in his back. You'll have players that, I you doubt know, it. I haven't got to. <laughs> <laughs> you've got players that, you know, either have exited the World Cup early or, you know, or not been to the World Cup. I think it's a big, big chance. I, I would prioritise it. I think, um, obviously, there's, there's part of you that wants to be cautious because you don't want to, you know... In an ideal world, I think a, a fringe squad should be able to, to to beat Gillingham fairly comfortably. But at the same time, his first home game, you want to get goals, you know, score goals. I think you've got to prioritise it. Obviously, I the mean, priority should be staying in the in the Premier League. But if we can win this game, you get a favourable draw in the next round. Like I said, you, you, you know, two rounds away from a two-legged semi-final where anything can happen. And you've only got what one of the top six left, is it? Or two? Well, you've got City and Liverpool, but they're playing each other, aren't they? One's got, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the, the semi final is just uh, it's United, two legs United. this year. Is it two legs no, this year? It was only one I leg think, last year, wasn't it? I think I, I heard someone moaning that it was two legs this year, so I assume it is. I've not actually factually yeah. checked that, but yeah, yeah, like you said, only a few wins from, from Wembley, really. So I, I, for me, it'd be like, well, have a go in the Carabao. Maybe don't prioritise the FA Cup. Maybe that's when you make most of your changes because, you know, we've, I think we've been quite fortunate, really, with the draws. We've had Leeds made a lot, quite a lot of changes and Preston and Gillingham. Probably not going to get that fortunate again in the FA Cup. But I think we should go full strength against Gillingham because it's going to instill a bit of confidence, isn't it? If, if Wolves get a convincing win on their first, game under Lopetegui, no matter what the opposition is in front of a packed out Molyneux, you know you're going to go to Everton who are absolutely garbage, who are sticking with Lampard for some reason. I said on the last podcast, I think they're, in, I think they're banging trouble. You know, it's going to breed confidence for that game. So Don't say that. Uh, say they're brilliant if we're going off your curve. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> you know, they've, more... they've got an interesting player there at Everton that I'd like Lopetegui to have a look at in Jan. Um... Okay. <laughs> Could he, could, he, could, he, could he play just in front of the back four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. could play like a DM, <laughs> number six. He's actually in the England squad as well, so he's got, got to have some calibre, you know. Although, it's just just yeah. speaking of the boy, um, there's a thing gone out today with um, Budweiser, I think, it was it Lab Bible? Um, it's Sterling, Cody and uh, Kyle Walker, and they're talking about whether Phil Foden's the most Walks. technically gifted player in, uh, sorry, Walks, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in the uh, R- Razzan Walks, and, uh, and they're saying about <laughs> Phil Foden being the... Uh, the most technically gifted and Sterling said Cody's up there and he like looks at him and he was like oh no when we played together in the under 18s in midfield I'd never seen anything like it so I was like so we've lost a very oh. technically gifted player there for four minutes oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't see it but they're, they're like banging trouble especially at the weekend against Portland I mean their fans don't take long take much to turn but <laughs> looks like they have but I, I think we might have players back anyway when's uh, when's the last group game in the, for Portugal 2nd of December yeah, you, you, you will. I don't, because I don't the think fi- Obviously, the final's two days before, but I don't think anyone, any, I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't think any of our players will get to the final. So I don't, I don't think they'll qualify. Mm. At the group. They've got, who they got? Uruguay in their group? And Uruguay, so Ghana, and, and Korea. Korea I, think they'll get, I think they'll, they'll get qualify. I don't, I, I don't versus the boys. I didn't realise it. A lot of so. unrest. Bang. There's a lot of unrest in the Portugal camp at the minute. What, so. what are your thoughts on the Ronaldo situation, Dave and Finn, before we move on to the Arsenal game? Um... I think he's a bit mad. I'm a big Ronaldo fanboy, to be fair. But I think it is it is mm. mad that you've done like an exclusive interview with a prick that is Piers Morgan as well. <laughs> and whilst you're still under contract at said club, that is mad. How much of a fan are you for Ronaldo? If he if he said he joined Wolves, I'd leave, I'd end this podcast now to go pick him up. So. Would you? Can you give us <laughs> yeah. a can you give us a sue? Yeah. Sue. <laughs> that was you know, proper like <laughs> um, or the, what's that the was a wave by the way I didn't <laughs> God, you're on one today mate yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the intro bloody hell you got to tell us what's your, thought, what's your thoughts on it Finn mate it's not even out yet I know it will be when the podcast goes out on the Wednesday and I'm already bored of it I know you listen to talk sport a lot like me and it's all they've got to Every I mean, it's all they've got is, to talk. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm already sick of it and it, yeah literally still got two nights of the actual interview uh, he's going at Gina, who's obviously my new best mate, so I didn't appreciate that. And um, and 
I, I just I don't see when he's criticizing other club makes stupid decisions. He one was of those one was of those. to yeah exactly. Yeah. So like you just make like you're shooting yourself in the foot. I mean he's going to get what he wanted, isn't he? He's going to be able to leave. Yeah. And I think he's tried with criticizing the Glazers to be like, oh look fans, I think what you think, but massively backfired. But also it's going to be it's not like he's rang Piers Morgan after like a heated argument with Man United. It's going to be like carefully considered by all his people. Our Uncle George. It's calculated. Well, he knows exactly yeah, what he's exactly. doing. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, was even talking about the chefs and stuff. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what are you really? coming to me for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, oh, is that, that, yeah, they're not <laughs> the fifty. Cent. Cent. What are you saying? Fuck fifty four. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Rooney did that. Like he was like left bemused. Apparently, I saw the Sky Sports headline earlier. Like he couldn't believe it. He was just getting. He couldn't even spell bemused. Never mind. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's it, it's a strange one, but into the next round of the Carabao Cup, but <laughs> all came crashing back down again. Um, I say crashing, I thought the performance against Arsenal was a bit better, to be honest, especially the first half. But before we we actually talk about the game, Dave, Lopetegui's grand reveal. It, mm-hmm. The fans loved it, didn't they? I loved it, mate. It was class. I was in there a little bit earlier and, uh, yeah, it was, it was class. He, you know, how, like, even Nuno, like, they'd come closer to the South Bank but probably still stay a good, like, 20, 30 yards away. Mate, he was almost, like, on the byline. He was loving it, he, like, <laughs> pounding his chest and everything. And I think um, on the video he did with uh, Gillian Balagay, like, he, he was on about pod. it as well. Yeah, friend of the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, he was loving it. It was class. And I think, you know, we brought up the video. I think there's just straight away some sort of connection there. And you know how everyone's on about this connection between the manager and the fans? You get I it. Think- he, he, he's got it straight away. He gets it. And, and and even with the players, there's something about him. And I think this is going to sound weird, but the way he interacts and touches the players, like, you know, he's a bit touchy-feely. But I think, you know, it, it, yeah. yeah. But I think people love people love that and you connect with that straight away. And mm. I think his man management is going to be top. And I think he's going to get the morale and the attitude of the players where it needs to be. He gets it, say, Steve, 53 from Bilston. From Bilston yeah. <laughs> Might potentially have no hair. But... Yeah. Respect. <laughs> Respect. No, I, I get it though. And it, it is that touchy feeliness. It's like, I mean, the, the Neves one, I always thought like, you know, when he speaks to someone, he's just got the, like, the, the your hand behind the back of the head, like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Like it almost brings like a real togetherness and, you know, we we could be talking out of our asses, and the players might hate it and we might, he, he might not you do it. You've seen the Adama one today as well? Yeah. Yeah, he looked yeah, another double hander, wasn't it? See, Adamo like obviously seemed a bit awkward, but I think mm. with the attitude that Lopetegui's given him already, I don't know. I think Adama, I, I, obviously, I'm, I'm liking his performances at the minute. I'd love to see him like really kick on now, second half of the season, and obviously stay at the club. I think prior to Lopetegui joining, the chances of him staying at Wolves next year were almost zero. But with a Spanish manager in charge now, and with someone that knows what he's about, has full looks like he has belief in him. Be interesting to see if that situation changes. I don't. I think he'll go. I think he'll want more money elsewhere. Money that Wolves probably wouldn't give him. Mm. So wait and see, see what happens. But Wolves lined up with a five-three-two. Finn um, Toti coming in. Which when I saw that, I thought, oh, fucking hell! Like this is going to be. This is going to be <laughs> awful. I, I quickly realised that not one of Kilman or Collins had been dropped. I thought he'd gone four at the back with Toti. <laughs> I was thinking, oh boy, oh no, no, no! I'm not looking to look at this. But do you think it gave us a bit more balance, Finn? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I listened to a thing, um, I think I had Gary Neville on again um, on Sky Sports, where he was saying about how 5-3-2 was his least favourite formation in, in football. Yet, yeah, for me, in recent memory, it's what's brought me the most like success and joy with the, the Jota-Jimenez combo. Um, but I was then trying to analyse how we were playing it, how um, Gary Neville was saying it allows the opposition, if they play a four, their full-backs. He was, he was actually talking about when um, Liverpool and Tottenham played the week before, and how Robertson and Trent could just pin the wing backs back. And I was worried it was going to happen to us. And I mean, we kind of did that by design as well, by sitting in. Um, mm. But it worked well for what we wanted for that first half, kept them quiet. His, Totti's booking was, I mean, if you, it's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. But you've, yeah, if you're going to give it, you've got to give the other one. I, mate, I, was, I knew I that I straight away. Never, there was two never, Arsenal yeah. instances before then. I think earlier yeah. I'll keep the ball away. And then there yeah. was another one. It was and basically both the same defenses. place, yeah. And Same I said the pitch, yeah. to the people next to me, I said, guaranteed, whatever tackle it is, Atwell will book our next foul. And he did straight away. I think there was two of them, wasn't there? I was like, where's the standard? Like, no consistency yeah. whatsoever. And that, 
So on the reviews and fans react, I hate bringing up the referees because you'll always get a comment or someone moaning, it's like, why are you blaming the referees? But the last few that we've had, uh, Graham Scott last week, and then Atwell, but no one like every he, time he, sh- yeah. he shafted us before against Arsenal many years ago. Remember with the million red when... card? Well, yeah, red card, yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And 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 there again was just crap as well. And then how I know he's uh, your family friend, Finn. How Mike Dean's not given that penalty as well, which I'm sure. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, have you had a word, Finn? <laughs> well, Jen was there at this. Yeah, Jen was there. So I said, right, text your mum and tell him. Yeah, sort of that because yeah, I know we'll come on to to the penalty. It's like. <laughs> I mean, uh, careful what I say because I might bump into him at the family barbecue. Um, but like, it's all right. You got a few months before that happens. <laughs> barbecue, yeah. <laughs> two, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two foot him if I do see him. But um, but the uh, like everything about that. Are we right to go on to that decision now? We've sort of transitioned from the five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, how, so um, what's, <laughs> the, what, what's the relation to Mike Dean for the listeners? It's a. Uh, it's my girlfriend's friend, eh? mum's best friend or something something like that yeah yeah i can't remember but he sent me a message for my birthday but i'm gonna delete it now um <laughs> and <laughs> um and he said he was gonna subscribe to my channel but he can keep it quite frankly mike um, he has a few decisions yeah. <laughs> Give him the um uh, but yeah a few more decisions and and we'll love him again um but that decision i think i mean I, uh, in the ground you sort of have your own opinion but then you watch the sky sports footage after the game and then you feel even angrier but it was one of those ones where it hasn't even been implemented properly, has it, VR? Because they were saying they didn't even follow the correct protocol. So then you lose your anger from how did they not see it to how did they not even... T- it's, it goes back, and people always moan about this as well, like Dave said about refs, but if it was one of the top six, they spend five minutes off it on it because it's Wolves. It's, yeah, what was it, 20 seconds? Oh, it didn't give us time. They've kicked off. Go, like, come on. What? Well, did they bring it back for offside? Because I can't remember. I don't know if you'd be at this point. What I I think he'd flagged, but they hadn't blown the whistle, obviously, for the penalty. But it was obviously a blatant penalty. It was right in front of me. Mm. And I thought, I'd, I mean, to go, oh, I, I knew exactly what was going on. But like, I was like, that is not offside. That's not offside. So I expected Purple to come up, at least check the offside and then check the pen. But they haven't quite made it clear what he did check. But it seems like they haven't. Che- I think they've checked the penalty, but then not checked with it. I don't know what they've done. But the people that could see and hear what was going on were saying they haven't followed it correctly, like the commentators. So. Yeah, because I think, I don't, you know, I'm sure people will tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think what happened is, obviously, you've gone through one goal, it's a penalty, but they've gone, they've stuck with the decision that it's offside. But it's not offside. So, yeah. and it's it's as clear as day for a penalty, and you could argue it's a red card because he's not tried to play the ball. I know his last one was in the box, mm. but it'll be, a, it'll be a red. And you know, Arsenal fans will. After the the uh, the David was it the David yeah. Louise one? Oh, they, they, oh, yeah, they, I'm they, sure is. Yeah. yeah, they still don't <laughs> understand that it's a sending off. Like, oh, it pisses me off. Uh, yeah, but he, he, he's tried to play the ball. He's moved out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> he's moved out of the way. So that's not trying to play the ball. Um, but yeah, it's a sending off as well, isn't it, Dave? It's just an absolute fucking shambles. It's it's, yeah, it's like- a shit show. How can we how can we not follow the protocol and the process of these decisions? We've had VAR now for what three years. I reckon, I reckon Mike Dean's having a sip of tea or something whilst that incident is happening because... So he's uh, sending Vin uh, voice notes or doing his, <laughs> doing his cameos. Yeah, yeah, Mike Dean, yeah, yeah. celebrity referee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's frustrating. I think like Finn said, you know, when it's when it's the, the top side, you know, but that's, you know, game-changing decision, clear and obvious decision. Um, you score, you know, red card for the opposition, a clear-cut chance for us to score from a penalty. You know, you won the look against 10 men then. And the way we defended for the majority of the game wasn't too bad, you know. And come the end of the season, you know, it could be three points between Arsenal winning the league and not winning the league or us having three points from staying up or going down, you know. And, and it's frustrating that there's decisions like that. And when it's twat well in charge, absolutely useless. <laughs> Do you think it changed the game, though? Like, honestly. Yeah. A red yeah, card, go down to 10 yeah. Men, for sure, yeah. For sure. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, I had Saliba I had Saliba in my FPL and I was screaming for the red card like, yeah, it, yeah 100% sure. it would have changed yeah do you think we'd have, would have won we'll never know Matt we'll never know yeah they're gonna know they're gonna know nobody's gonna know <laughs> it's just it's just frustrating is it and when you're down there those are the things that go against you but that's not bad luck that's just incompetence like yeah. 
it's it, that's why it you just... feel uh, Steve Davis got a lot of stick, and there are times like yes, I think he made bad decisions like the game against Palace and so on, but stuff like that and stuff like. You know the Brighton game where a couple of the decisions went against us. Like it is, it is frustrating for him as a manager as well. I suppose. Mm. I mean, nil nil though, half time. Finn, I don't know about you, but I went in fairly happy. Arsenal had, a, you know, two or three chances, but they're going to because they're, they're a top side. But I felt like it was quite an even game. I think if you'd have said to me before, like you don't know the position of these two teams, I'd say that Arsenal were the better side, but I wouldn't say that we were bottom of the league. No, no, not at all. It's sort of reminiscent of our old school performances against top six teams. The only real threat was that one offside goal, which was taken brilliantly. And it reminded you of the, the quality we were up against. But apart from that, didn't feel too threatened. As you say, I was happy at half time until I then saw the penalty replay on the screen and was fuming again. Um, but yeah, largely very happy. Thought that we could take that on into the second half. I can't even remember. What was the first, second goal? Was the. What was the first goal? Um, so they were both wow. very similar. Very where similar, they, yeah. Like both came from the right hand side and we like, you know, down the byline again. Oh, it was Vieira, wasn't it? Yeah, Vieira to Odegaard. Mm. So that, yeah, none of that had happened in the first half. I don't know what really changed second half, but yeah, it, it, it just always feels inevitable, doesn't it? Even though I was happy with that first half. Yeah, it, you never have that real, like, like we'd have old school, that real belief that we could get yeah. some out of the game. It is it's sad. I've never, ever seen a team shit themselves so much in each box as yeah, much as both. Wolves. Oh, oh, Wolves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Arsenal. Honest, honest <laughs> to God. Well, as soon as someone gets into the 18-yard box um, from a wide position, our defenders, it's like they have a factory reset. I, I've never I've never seen anything like it. And, it, and it's, you know, it, all, the, all the goals... I feel like every single goal we can see this year looks the same. Mate, I'm <laughs> trying to think the Brighton the goals. Yeah. The Brighton right. winner the and those two Arsenal goals yeah. would be the same. You know what I noticed yeah. as well? First half especially, um, they were trying deep crosses towards yeah. Samedo. So Ben White was picking the ball up a lot and mm. pinging it quite like towards the back far post. And Samedo, like I said earlier, he had a good game. He just, he, he was on it a lot more, pressing a lot better. Um, and dealt with those situations a little bit more as well. I think Collins gave him a little bit more protection there, to be fair. Um, and I think that was helped, obviously, with playing a back five as well. But same, the opposite end of the pitch, Matt. Set, first half, we had chances. I think Guedes had such a busy game that I think you'll speak to some people and think he played well and speak to other people and think he played crap. Because mm. we saw that even, obviously, me and Matt, we went out afterwards, didn't we, um, to, to Wolverhampton. And, and, you know, you got a lot of drunk Wolves fans there. Some saying we're going down, some saying Guedes is shit. Um, but I actually thought he had that was one of his best games in a wall shirt. Um, but he had the one chance, I think, first half, which he plays over the bar. The second half one was I think he flicked it over the guy's head. Yeah. And then he faked it and then lost the ball after the fake. A confident striker or forward it's would it. hit that straight away. And I think that's yeah. just the, the difference, those margins at the minute. You say you had people talking to about Geddes and going up, going down. I had something a little bit different. So I was walking through Warhampton City Centre and some lad, I don't know who he is, screamed in my face, Matt Cooper, your shit as a party is well clear. Um, <laughs> I'd, like to thank, I'd like to thank Adrian as a party for the comments. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> little £10 pound bong. And I was like, yeah. thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> you almost had them blokes starting us in spoons for no reason whatsoever. Oh, well. God, he's just idiots, right? Uh, I, I, don't, I never go out in Wolverhampton, and there's a reason why. And that, that was it. It's a bit far as well. I still had, you know, still had a. Had a you Christmas brought the thing. average age uh, up in Grain Store, Wolverhampton as well. So. Yeah, it's a bit seedy in there, isn't it? But Dave, Dave's coming out next Friday into Birmingham. So we're going to the, the fan park. Oh, the fan um, park. This is what I'm going to wear, Matt. You reckon well. I'll look like a twat wearing this? I mean, if you, if you look like one now, nah, you certainly will out in town yeah. on Friday. Yeah, sound. <laughs> No, I wouldn't wear that. I'm, well, I'm hoping the bet might lads will send us some merch. Um, I'm sure. Figured out very well in the chat earlier, so maybe it'll have to get But do do we really want to be cutting around Dig Buff in bet mate jumpers? We absolutely do. So Ryan, Scott, Deck, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> nice us up. But yeah, it's uh, it's just frustrating, like you said, Dave. It's that confidence as well. It's trying to overplay it, especially with the likes of Gedge. But I, I actually. I think there's a real player there to be unlocked. And people might think, like, how have you seen that from 
what we've seen this season. But I, I do, and I feel like we just underutilise absolutely everyone. Like, there's rumours that Chelsea are in for Sonata, which I, I don't believe is true. But if he goes to Chelsea, it's going to be like a world beater. Like, mm. I just feel like that's that's the case. But The last um, week, Geddes has been, he's been good. I think yeah. the, the confidence levels are there. And I, I, like I said, he had a busy game, so he had mm. good moments, but he also had a lot more bad, bad moments. But I'd rather him be getting into the positions where he's on the ball and making things happen, whether he wins wins or loses it, because it shows that he's changing as a player and he's trying to get some more confidence. I think someone yeah. like Lopetegui will get the best out of him as well. And two performances for me who um, were outstanding. Firstly, Hugo Bueno, but secondly, Vibicar Traore. I thought they were both... Excellent. Let's talk about Bueno first, Finn. For such a young lad, he he's his play is so balanced and he's he's so confident on the ball. Even like, you know, you, you may find some young fullbacks who just want to do the basics and just, you know, don't stray too far forward. But he's got he's got a set of bollocks on him, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. It, when you say that about keeping it simple, yeah. Most young fullbacks would have just right, I've I've defended well against Saka here who I don't particularly rate, but um, people have him up here and he's kept him quiet. But then to also, I mean, he took him out, skinned him a few times, was really adventurous, didn't exactly keep it simple, as you say. So really, really impressed. I think those two stood out massively um, as two perform as much as you can in a 2-0 loss. But yeah, clearly like joint man of the match, those two. But yeah, um, Bueno, 8 Nori. I think 8 Nori had a great performance in the Leeds game as well. Probably our, our best Stuck, mm. stack position at the moment. So if one of them was right footies, that would be really handy at the moment, but unfortunately not. But yeah, we're, we're spoiled for choice there. Really impressed with both of them. Yeah, Dave and, and Bubakar Triore, one of the be- best players on the pitch, for, even for Arsenal and um, Wolves. I thought he was, it, it, it was absolutely everywhere. A, a, a threat offensively, um, pressed ex- excellently, defensively sound. Gonna choke everywhere. on water, so carry on, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, yeah, he's he's like I said, ever since he's broken into the team, he's been really, really good. Um, and he's one of those players just on the ball sometimes, he looks like really awkward, and he shouldn't he shouldn't be it's as good on the ball as he is, yeah, yeah. But there was a certain run, I think he got the pass or the cross that led to the penalty shout, didn't he, in the first half. There was just moments where, like, physically and the speed on the ball. He did the old uh, Finn will know I mean, the do- double R1 on, uh, I think it was in Schenk, a little bridge past uh, one of the Arsenal players where he tapped the ball around him and then beat him for pace. And it's just like, like really, really good and a proper box-to-box midfielder performance, which Wolves have really lacked. And if we can have a lot, the rest of the team with that sort of confidence on the ball, I think we'll, we'll have a real shout in the second half of the season. I don't want Wolves to pull the trigger too early in terms of his purchase no. option because he's only starred for three or four games. And I don't want to have, you know, the Huang, you know, instance again. And they did yeah. the exact same thing with Tongo Doombia as well back in the day. He was uh, unbelievable. Mate, had about two good games and then was never fit again. So <laughs> I think, you know, you've got the option in next, for next summer. Use it then. See what he can bring for the rest of the season. Um, but the signs, the early signs are that he's a really, really good um, sort of raw, but still really talented footballer. He's, I think he's the dynamism that we've all been asking for though isn't it like we've, we've all identified that mold of midfielder is what we've we've needed since we come up really they created created still... great balance in the midfield as well yeah I, I think what was the game before it might have been the Leicester game where Matinho, Nunes and Neves started and they were all over the place as a mm. midfield three and I think the thing with Traore is that it'll be everywhere for you and he just adds he just looks so much even just looking at it in, in a, st- a yeah. still image, the midfield just looks balanced straight away with him in the team. I, th- I think a, a midfield three of Neves, Nunes and um, and Traore. That's, I would worry. Really well. We've not seen it yet properly, you know. That. Well, against Arsenal, the last like, five or ten minutes, it was yeah. good. But like Nunes is really dynamic as well, isn't he? But probably a tiny little bit more. Attention. I don't know. Like from, what, from what I've seen, I've been more impressed with Traore because he takes a, the game by the scruff of the neck and, and goes for it. But... Yeah, I agree though, mate. And I think we're far too easy to play around when it's uh, Matinho, Neves and, and Nunes. Because it's, I mean, uh, Matinho was the most dribble pass player in his first year at <laughs> Wolves in the Premier League. I can't even imagine what it, what it's like now. I saw a stat earlier about Matinho. He was on, you know, the other, uh, is it 
outside the uh, seven or yeah, the other fourteen. Yeah, and he, he was he was quite high on something. I don't know exactly. Chances exactly. created, I think. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's there's still a place for him though, but you can't be playing him week in week out. And I think I he has to when, accept that. One. Yeah, and when we saw that the the Portugal squad he wasn't in there, I said to you, Dave, I said I wouldn't be surprised if he went in January. Because he, well, he won't want the relegation on his CV. He's probably looking at Saudi, Saudi Arabia, and thinking that's a bit of me. But yeah. I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll be playing after after this year, do you? Not at Wolves, anyway. No, I think he'll leave at the end of this year. I think there's still a place for him. You know, yeah. who knows? You know, Lopetegui might put him in a role that that, that suits him uh, in his current physical state. But yeah, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It who was that uh, old geezer that was in the when we played? That Ever was Benega. it, yeah. What a baller. The new Ever what a baller. Yeah. <laughs> when Sevilla beat us, yeah. Yeah, he's so good. He's still, I think he's still playing. He's in Saudi as well, I think. Yeah. Or he was, at least. Yeah, he's a, he's a proper player. You know, he? this is a proper random uh, fit, tangent. We played Reading in the Carabao a couple of years ago. You know, when like Jordao and Sheraton Sh- Shabani Charlie played. Adam. Mate, that's who I'm saying. Charlie Adam, yeah. There was just one random bowl bloke just stood in the midfield for Reading. Did not move. He was in the centre circle the whole game. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? Because I've, he got like, put a load of weight on, had yeah. no hair. Mate, he'd just stand on the centre in the centre circle, would not move. But like to be fair to him, he was pinging he passes around for joke. It was like a proper Sunday league performance from him. But <laughs> the Perlo yeah. role though, isn't it? Though yeah. what Neves does excellently. Like I know there's a bit more to his game, but Neves doesn't really move that much. No. It's more lateral, isn't it? It's more side to side. So yeah. but I, I, I don't think we can stress enough. In the importance of this World Cup break now, it's it's like no other season we've had. We've got almost a pre season with a new manager. Um, mm. still, I think there's like 72 points to play for, still, or 73 points, something like that. I don't know, does 72 go into three? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, yeah it does, yeah, it does, yeah. So, yeah, 72. So, Finn, how important is this World Cup break for us and, and our, our survival? Massively, I think it's going to benefit us the most of, of any club in the Premier League. And um, I did hear someone, I think it was on talks earlier, saying that we've completely, we're going to have no new manager bounce. Like, we, you don't get that instant one, maybe. As in, you know, like, sort of even they're just going off pure adrenaline, not even tactics, yeah. just like, oh, we're finally free. So we are losing that. But no, yeah, as you say, it's basically a new pre-season. It sort of reminds me of when, when Newcastle were taken over around a similar time I think they were on four or five points at the time and they ended up finishing above us like uh, mid table so um mm. if we can go on a run um I, I back us too uh Lopetegui's filling me with a lot of confidence he's talking the talk so yeah hopefully he's now got a month to uh to then be able to walk the walk afterwards so yeah it, it, brilliant timing really but what it's sort of Wolves have also worked around it as well haven't they they've done it like this because we've got this break so it's chicken and egg but yeah it's worked really well Mm. And I think uh, he feels like a breath of fresh air, and I just hope he can turn it around. And I, I, I think he will. I, I feel confident that he can. Um, and hopefully, with the murmurs that are coming out, you know, John Percy reported that Wolves have to, have to back him in January, and I said they are. It just depends mm. what what we mean by back. But before mm. we move on, we talk about the bet, mate. Pot. So Jordan placed, and so did Finn. Um, so George finished eleventh, winning sixteen pound, and Finn finished twenty ninth. Um, Did I but, place? Yeah, you you play, you placed about twenty ninth. Oh, but the in. winner was um, Ami at sixty eight. Who, and I'm a bit, I don't know how he's done it. Ben, who it's Ben, my mate, who who I work with, um, his father, and I spoke to Ben about bet mate. And he's like, oh, that sounds good because he, he likes a bet. And he went, I'll get I'll see what my dad thinks. That was his dad's first ever go on bet, mate. And he's won the pot, won 250 wow. quid off a of fiver. And then he played again the next day, and I think he won 100 and something. So, on his first two games, he's, he's won over, I think he's won over like 350 quid. Which I asked him earlier, I said, Is your dad like knowledgeable about football? And he went, No, not really. <laughs> he went, He doesn't really know any of the new players. He just picked people who, who he's heard of. So, perhaps great captain the- shout. He had heard a god captain. Brilliant. Yeah, shout. he's got. He's got the well, no, he's got one player different to me, but yeah, it's the captaincy. Very well played, sir. Yeah, and I, you know what? Who was his vice captain, Dave? Was it another midfielder? I think it was Hayes. Uh, no, never, yeah, centre mid. You know what he's done? They're the default captains, aren't they? I reckon he's just left them. Yeah, yeah, in the mid, yeah. So, beginner's look, eh? Beginner's look, yeah, yeah, beginner's look. But obviously, no. 
bet make pots for um, a few weeks in the Premier League, but they will have a load of pots on for the World Cup at every single game. So if you are interested, use our link in the description down below for a £5 free bet when you do stake a cash bet. But also bet make are crowdfunding as well. So um, this is your chance to become a bet mate investor for as little as £10. I said on the last podcast, £10 a month. Um, that's not true. It's actually just uh, uh, from ten pounds. So investment. So it's essentially like um, uh, stocks. If anyone's got like a trading two one two account where you can invest in particular companies, um, that's what Betmate are doing. But the lads have told us um, with with you know we can gain equity in the company like a normal investment. But with this, there'll also be rewards for investment. So monthly free bets, hoodies, t-shirts, um, hospitality tickets to a Premier League game based on how much you invest. But of course, with this, your um, your equity, uh, your capital is at risk. So with that, and of course, we're playing BetMate, please gamble aware. But we're looking forward to next week, aren't we, Dave? Going to um, the fan park, secret yep. space in Digba for the for the England game on Friday. BetMate lads who are, are, are partnering Are they going to be there as well? Uh, I think Ryan I may be, potentially, but yeah. it's uh, they've asked, asked us to go down, so a, a big thank you. And- I'm looking forward to meeting uh, Mark Lawrence. Yeah, oh, Mark Lawrence is hosting it, and apparently we'll be in the uh, the VIP with Mark Lawrence. Um, you'll be asking for can pictures. You ask him, can you ask him about? I, have you heard his um thingy going viral again today on the Lampard non-goal against Germany? I didn't realize it was him on commentary as well. Funny. What did he say? He's like he's he's basically like any England fan, but he's just like screaming down the Good mic like, "This is what FIFA didn't want: technology." I, 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 I like. Ma- I didn't. I didn't dislike Mark Lawrence. To be fair, I used to like him on uh, like match of the day. Did you? See, you know, every week on BBC he does predictions, right? I think Loro mm. predicts or something. Lovely. And I remember it, I'm talking like four or five years ago now. They said if you put all his predictions like together in a league table, Liverpool would have finished unbeaten, like won every single game. <laughs> like you just predicted them to win every week. So yeah, and that's when but, the yeah, got shit as well. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it was like probably Brendan Rodgers' days, man. Brilliant. It's 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 not as good as um, oh, Garth Crooks' team of the week. Oh, that oh, is mate. special. Yeah, he plays about seven like... strikers, doesn't he? Something mad. Troy Dean, he sent holding midfield. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what a hell, what a hell. Um, <laughs> but something else I'm looking forward to as well, boys. And Finn is involved in this one. Finn can't come to the fan bar because he's sunning himself in Mexico doing his um, his mm-hmm. preseason warm weather training camp, I believe. Yeah, um, so but much, this <laughs> much better Friday. This one. <laughs> yeah, so this coming Friday is the Molyneux sleep out. Uh, and it's something we've been really excited to do for for the past few weeks. Before we we get into it, though, a huge thanks to people who have who have donated since the, since the last podcast. So I believe uh, since the last podcast, big thanks to Chris Ward, Andrew Gribben, uh, Richard Lovett, Paul Morris, who's I believe Finn's old man, Sheila, and John Morris, who I believe is Finn's uh, grandparents. Old old <laughs> yeah. Um, and the comment is: make sure you stay warm, Finn. Kiss. Um, and a big I didn't shout about out. that. Yeah, <laughs> and a big shout out to Tetanol Fireplace Co. I don't know who they are. Oh, yeah. Um, What's he put the business name for? <laughs> yeah. Give him a promotion. That's Dave's dad who's, who's donated as well. That's probably uh, coming like, out of my wages, by the way. Yeah, tax right off. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and also gift aid as well. So Respect aid. Definitely a respect gift. aid. There you go. Um, but we, we've smashed our target now. We, we set, you know, we, we set a target of three hundred pound, hundred pound each. But we're at one hundred seventy four percent of the target, which is five hundred twenty four pound. But if anyone has got a, a fair, um, a spare few coins that they want to part ways with, and of course, you know, our, our, our t- times are tough at the minute. Um, Dave will leave the uh, the link in the description to the just giving down below. Um, but this week, Dave actually caught up with Tom Warren from the Walls Foundation to discuss the sleep out and the great cause that we're all raising money for. So then, yeah, I'm sat alongside Tom, who's the senior manager at Walls Foundation. Tom, how are you? Very well, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good, all good. We're talking about the Molyneux sleep out. I can't believe how quick it's come about again. It's the third one, is it, I believe? Yeah, third third, yeah, third in the stadium, and then fourth, including the one that we did online, which obviously was a little bit different. But Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it felt, yeah since last year, so I don't know. I thought my bones are still cold since then. But, yeah, <laughs> here, we, here we go again. No, I did the one in 2019, really enjoyed it, to be fair, and looking forward to, to doing it again. But obviously, a lot of our listeners would have seen it on social media, heard it on our podcast, but what exactly is the Molyneux Sleep Out, and what, who are we fundraising for? 
Um, it's exactly what it says in the team release. It's basically the opportunity to I'll call it an opportunity to sleep in the stand at the stand in the stand colis. Um, yeah, so everyone who takes part essentially just comes opportunity to build your own camp, um, bring whatever cardboard you want and your sleeping bags, and yeah, make yourself a bit of a fort for the evening. Um, there's a few like kind of guest speakers and everything going on on the night. Um, and then yeah, I think we're so it's fundraising obviously for who I work for, so Wolf Foundation. So we're mm-hmm. the obviously the official charity of the football club, um, and obviously the Good Shepherd, who are a charity just over the road from Molyneux that are a partner of ours that we work really closely with. So we've worked really closely with them for all the four times we've done the sleep out, um, raised a lot of really good funds, which obviously that's the main point of the whole thing, really. It, it, as much it's there to raise awareness of homelessness and the work which the foundation does and the Good Shepherd does, but on top of that, it is a fundraising event and it's there to raise funds towards both charities, essentially. Yeah, and, and I mean, how important are these sort of events? Obviously, you've got the Molyneux Sleep Out, we've got the Feed the Pack scheme, which is, or Feed Our Pack scheme, which is doing so well. How important are, are these for, you know, not just the city of Wolverhampton, but across the whole of the UK? They're huge. I think that's the, that's the whole thing, really. I mean, obviously, with charities, we're there to make a difference on what our aims and objectives are. I think the foundation's got, you know, a real clear strategy of the difference which we want to make into Wolverhampton. And the Good Shepherd's got, you know, a clear strategy of what, of what they want to do. So all the money that gets raised and all that profile raising is only going to be a positive thing for us because if more people can be aware of the work that we do, then, you know, that might be, I don't know, someone might, li- someone might listen to this podcast and, might be the first time they've heard about the foundation and they might engage with us and learn about the projects which we deliver and that might then be something which might benefit them or a member of their family or someone they know Um, and similar for the good shepherd i mean you know the good shepherd offers so many services on top of your support of homelessness and your support of people that are experiencing food poverty and the same with the foundation you know we, we deliver you know over 40 different projects which can affect which target anybody from a baby up to someone that's you know, elderly. I think our oldest yeah. participants ninety four now. So wow. you know, there's a, there's benefits for both organisations, really. Mm, definitely, and I know um, I, Matt mentioned it on our podcast a, a number of times. But at the sleep out, obviously, there are still facilities that we can use toilets. Obviously, I think hot drinks as well. Sleeping bags. I, I saw something in a tweet about sleeping bags. What's what's the deal with those as well? I, I mean, it's, I think it's a case of bring your own. We've got we've got we've got a few which um, one of our charity partners has provided us with, which are yeah. just kind of like branded ones. But I think you know, it, it's to, I think it's to try and make the experience as real as you can. I think we're quite lucky yeah. that there's, there's a big difference with the sleep out. And obviously, yeah, you, you know, you're sleeping on you're sleeping outside, you're sleeping on mm-hmm. concrete with cardboard and whatever you want. Um, the big the big difference which I I which Last year, I probably shouldn't give this away. Last year was the first one that I'd actually done, kind of like properly. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the big difference is, that, you know, you feel safe. You still know that you know you, you're getting up at six o'clock in the morning. You've got a, you've got a home to go to. You've got a bed to go to. You've got, you know, all of that stuff which you get from being at home. And it's recognizing mm-hmm. that the people that are homeless in the city have don't have that. You know, they get up yeah. and then what do they go and do? What do they go and do afterwards? Yeah. Um, and they might not have a sleeping bag. They might not have anything. So we're quite lucky that uh, I think last year I ended up walking over to Asda at like eleven o'clock and buy myself another <laughs> buy myself another pillow. Yeah. But you know, it, that recognizing recognizing they don't have that. So it, everyone that turns up, you know, just bring whatever you need to make yourself safe. Retail mm-hmm. have given us a load of cardboard which people can have, um, <laughs> and yeah, just away we go from that really. Now, how many people do you think are getting involved so far? And is it too late I, I for think... anyone to join in? No, no, I think there's still a few tickets available. I think we're aiming for 150, which is about which is about the cap for how many we can have. Yeah. Um, obviously, because we use the stand curly slower, but obviously it's not like you have, not like you have an individual seat. We're kind of yeah, giving yeah. them a bit of a row. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of it, it, it's just it's just rock up. I think it's about, about seven o'clock. There's a few kind of guest speakers, a few special guests that are coming. Um, yeah, opportunity to make your camp. There's a the kiosks open for everyone to go and get yourself a brew and hot chocolate, and then yeah bed down for the night i think last last year you say lights out it's, it's, uh, naturally there's people that are all chatting most of the night but that's fine yeah. again that's life yeah. um yeah but yeah no it, it genuinely is a really good event it's a chance to kind of network and speak to people that are like-minded and you know there to do a good thing and to fundraise so it genuinely is a really really good event um so yeah actually really looking forward to it so if if anyone wants to get involved is it on the walls ticket page that they uh they can grab a ticket yeah so yeah so what just walls ticketing simple as that go on there search more than you sleep out and obviously i would just encourage as well as that you know if you can't take part and and join us then please obviously fundraise please be someone mm-hmm. that supports somebody else that's taking part like i said it is it is a fundraising event it's there to 
raise money and obviously understanding that times are tight at the moment so understanding if, if people have got any spare anything spare that they can do then brilliant um but as much as times are tight for fundraisers times are tight for the people which we engage with and the good shepherds engage with you know that whether it's a fiver a fiver provides a couple of hot meals for a family you know it's, yeah. it, and that's what that's what i think fundraising is really important about with what who we are and what the good shepherd are it's recognizing that any of that fund that gets raised goes straight to the people that need it most and straight into whether it's the projects which we deliver which obviously are wide ranging mm -hmm. or the projects and the good shepherd does and the good shepherd you know it's not just recognizing homelessness it's trying to not just put a plaster on a problem it's recognizing that actually trying to fix a problem and whether that's yeah. you know providing someone there's reasons people are homeless you know it's whether because not got not got a job or not got anything like that so the good shepherd will do support with people find their job support on how to get open a bank account all this type of stuff which is what gets you out of poverty yeah. um provided providing food and food parcels on the day are just only good enough for that day aren't they so mm -hmm. it's about what we can do going forward on kind of the week on to get that person out of the situation they're in um and hopefully obviously people on the people on the night will learn about that but hopefully by you know you only have to research the foundation of good Shepherd and see the wide ranging work which we do which ho yeah. hopefully should encourage people to donate what they can yeah, you mentioned it earlier on as well to finish off if people want to get involved in the foundation whether that's you know volunteering or whatever what's the best way for them to do that uh, get, number of ways really obviously biggest thing i'd say is just follow us on social media um uh, we've got obviously all our all our social accounts so twitter instagram facebook at wwfc foundation or google us on the search us on the world website our new strategies just launched which is on there which hopefully gives everyone a bit more understanding in terms of what we're trying to do and the scale of the work which we do or you know get in touch um foundation at wolves.co.uk or tom warren at wolves.co.uk get in touch with me and i'll point in the direction of the right people because you know people have got different things which they engage with which they want to mm -hmm. support you know if people if people want to support with food poverty we can do that if it's support with a mental with a mental health project we can do that it's such we do deliver such wide ranging work and the idea being that you know we'd like to signpost people in the direction which they want to be involved with recognizing that the foundation's so big we're not expecting people to do everything um, there's loads of people can get in, get involved with and volunteering is so important with us it's a way of giving back uh, we're now working with you know local 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 companies like the british gas that are giving up days of their staff time to come and engage with the foundation do wow. work for us and that's yeah. so, again that's so powerful because again mm -hmm. more more manpower more money just means more impact to the people of wolverhampton that need us really yeah no fantastic really looking forward to the model new sleep out on friday tom appreciate you taking your time to sit down with us to uh talk a little bit more about it uh i'll just give him pages in the description of the podcast as well but if anyone else uh sees the walls foundation wants to donate a little bit of money feel free to do so but yeah tom thank you very much i'll speak to you soon thanks mate i'll catch you friday yeah it will do Big fans to Tom Warren there from the Walls Foundation for giving us his time and we're all very much looking forward to doing this on Friday. Like I said, if you have got any any money you'd like to donate, I'm sure Dave will leave the description to the Just Giving page um, in the description down below. And a big thanks to those who have already donated. Right then, chaps, question time. So thanks for all who sent the questions in on Twitter today. They've got some really good questions. I'll start with the first one from official F3W. Um, Dave, should we change formation? Um, I think Lopetegui is always stuck with his four three three. I don't think he'll shy away or change from that. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he took any was inspiration, let's say, from the the five slash three at the back he would have seen on Saturday. Um, but I think it'll be a four three three still, and it can work. We've seen, you know, I think with the right coach and the right players, I think four three three can work. It's just defensively, obviously, we're being a lot more leaky whilst we're still not scoring goals. So yeah. I don't think he'll shy away from the 4-3-3 anyway. What do you reckon, Finn? I agree with Dave on that, but I um, should. I do think if you brought in another centre-half and went 5-3-2, I think we stay up. Um, but, yeah, I probably agree with Dave and that realistically he's probably going to go with the 4-3-3. And if he coaches what he knows, I'm, I back him as well. So, quite happy to stay. Amar's Music Show has asked, every manager has their preferences for players, but do you think there will be any surprise inclusion slash ex exclusions for every game time? Joe Hodge. Um, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what what who he brings in. I don't know. I think everyone at the moment in such a small squad is getting quite a lot of game time, aren't they? Or a fair amount of game time. I, I can't see anyone other than the normal players 
getting getting a shout. I think even Hugo Bueno might step it up and be a big part of him, a uh, big part of his plans. Um, but I think we'll see signings come in as well and get integrated quite quickly into the team. I think the biggest thing for me in terms of, I know you said exclusions, is if anyone's let go, any senior players mm. are let go. Mm. Um, I would be quite intrigued to see what happens there. Doesn't look like Neves will be going, thankfully. I don't think Neves will go. It might just, whether you class it as a surprise, players like Jimenez or anything like that, whether they're let go. Um, I can't, there's not really, it's been quite quiet in terms of rumours and so on. And I think... I'm hoping that the the players that we've got now have got the attitude that they want to get stuck in. They want to pro- you know support a new manager. I want to prove these fans that they aren't the team that, that or aren't a, you know players or a team that should be sat at the foot of the Premier League table. Yeah, yeah. What what do you reckon, Finn? Yeah, on inclusions, there isn't really much room, as Dave said, for for much of a surprise because everyone's in and around uh, ex- exclusions. I'm trying. Thing, yeah, if he does exclude anyone, he has got that month to then be able to just sell them instead of just have like a surprise player suddenly rotting on the bench for the rest of the season. I can't, I think most players in there is there is potential to work with them. Like, I think he's going to fancy Adama. I think he's going to, you've only really got four midfielders for three space, but as you say, you've got Joe Hodge that he might take a shine to. Then you might see Martino, as we said, hardly get any football. You think he's going to have to work with Nunes, even though we haven't been as impressed. With him, you can't just sort of exclude a forty-five million pound signing. So there isn't much room on either front, unless, yeah, as you say, we get signings in and a few go out the door. But I'm tr- it's because we're not necessarily changing formation. All players are going to be in those same places, and there's not really a regular bench player, is there, at the moment? Like Pedence, Guedes, Adama, they all sort of rotate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't see a player where you think, oh, he's not going to fancy him. Really, I don't know. Mm, it'd be interesting to see what he does with Adama because typically he's not his mm. kind of player. But yeah, I, I think he, I mean, maybe even reading a, bit, a little bit too much of the video, but I think he feels like he's a player that we can really utilise. Yeah. Um, I think with but, Adama, and we've said it before, I think he's probably one of those players, or one of the very few players in world football that every manager would love to to at least have a go at coaching. At least squad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think they just want... I think everyone that's worked with him thinks, right, I want I want to be the man that can get the best out of Adama Traore. And we yeah. saw it for one season under Nuno. And I'll be really intrigued to see to see how he goes under Lopetegui. Port, Port and Wolf has asked, if we do get relegated, and he's put in brackets, which we won't, um, which is positive, no. is there any chance at all that Lopetegui um, stays? I think so. I think even if we go down, he'll stay. I don't know what you guys think. I'd be intrigued to see what... I think I, I compared it to the Benitez situation, didn't I? Last week, you know, with Benitez joining Newcastle. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to see if it happens. Um, it, I think it completely depends on the sort of morale and atmosphere with the fans. I think if the fans turn on him and the football shit, um, then I don't... I think there's a small chance of it happening. Um, but I'd be interested to see what happens. But like, like he said, yeah. I hope it doesn't. Yeah, it's reassuring that he was going to do it in the first place, wasn't it, in the championship. But that is before Real Madrid, Spain and European trophies. So whether you think he's not good enough, but you've seen like Rafa Benitez do it and he'd won a lot of big trophies as well. So mm. fingers crossed. But yeah, it won't get to that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Adrian has asked, will Raul stay or go? Sounds like Lopetegui is not happy with his attitude. I'll tell you what doesn't happen as well is his missus keep tweeting about it. <laughs> I know that you know- tweet you sent me earlier, Dave. It's just like, it's not yeah. helping, is it? No, we, but we've had this from day one with Jimenez. I, I know Finn won't want to hear it, but when yeah, when he's got linked with Man U and then he's talking to the Mexican press and oh yeah, it's classy and like Man U being linked to me and stuff. I was like, what are you what are you doing? Just you know, um, but yeah, the whole the whole like, we've said it for the last two or three weeks. I think we keep talking about it. We don't know the full situation, and I don't know whether that to blame that on the club uh, or whether to blame it on Jimenez because I think you know, we, personally, I don't think. Both parties probably haven't gone about it in the right way. It's a um, disaster. Yeah, so uh, I don't know whether it... But Lopetegui's comments, it obviously sounds like he's not impressed with the whole situation. But there's, I think there's still a chance that he might not actually be in the squad. Uh, I know he's he's in the squad, but he may well yeah. be withdrawn if he's... He's meant to get minutes to, tomorrow. today, though, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, against Sweden. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. The, the tweet that I'm talking about is someone has... Um, put the clip up of Lopetegui talking about Jimenez in the press conference, which is what we just discussed about. And Jimenez's missus has replied with the face palm emoji and the crying face. 
uh, like crying laughing face. So I, I just thought some, I don't know, just 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 keep quiet. But if you look at his Instagram posts, um, all all the comments are like Mexican saying like, "Why are you doing this? You're finished." Like why 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 are you taking up space in the squad? So it's I don't amazing. think he can, I don't think he can win. But I think we, we like Dave said we've seen this before, haven't we? Like we when when he went through a purple patch, you've got his alpha that's working for Juventus in the Mexican press. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, it's, um, it's 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 not great. But I, I think the silence has been deafening in terms of coming out of walls because. Perhaps, and you know, for me, it looks like he wants to focus on getting fit for the World Cup, and that's just an assumption. I don't know that, but the fact Wolves haven't come out and really addressed it just almost adds fuel to that. Yeah, it. I think we've got to be careful as well because now the like mental health is being bandied about, so we don't actually know what's going on. Is that the reason mm. for everything being silent? I, I don't know anything. Um, so, but I, I do worry. But then also. I don't think people will blame fans for speculating, as you say, when we've been starved of any information on it. We're just seeing from afar that now magically all of a sudden he could get minutes tomorrow after, oh no, no chance he'll play for Wolves, he's injured. Um, I've just checked as well on that tweet that you mentioned, the the reporter that she replied to was the one that used to do the Spanish commentary for Wolves, like he was hired by Wolves. Um, so it's sort of all oh, really? very, um, yeah, yeah, all very... She, she had a dig at him about something though. The same bloke a couple of days ago, I think. I can't. Really, I think he said something about the injury, and she had a dig about him, saying it was all false or something like that. Right. So yeah, it's, I it's think it was that... in regards to his future. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. What? Well, yeah. Saying, and then she said she replied to a fan, didn't she? Saying, "Yeah, he'll wear a wool shirt again." Um. So yeah. Again, as we said for the last three, four weeks, we still don't know. But again, as you, no one can blame any fan for speculating because you want to know what's going on with who, like who has been one of your mm-hmm. best strikers of of all time. It's really weird. You said Lopate. You said he's an important player for us, and I think that's the only He's real not got positive, rid of Mazzi, is it? Yeah, it's no, not yeah. it's I think that's the only positive that can come from this. He goes, he gets fit, he gets game time off playing in the World Cup. He scores a few goals. He comes back to the Wolves fit and firing. She, I think that's she the put, only positive. The guy put a couple of days ago saying that Wolves aren't happy with the situation. And then she put, things are not like that. Let's be more serious with the information they share, please. Mm. But then if it's literally coming from Lopetegui's mouth about that, yeah. he's not happy with the situation. Like, who, who's bullshitting here? Mm. Uh, um, Matt Wolf has asked, what do you think Lopetegui's favourite biscuit is? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know any Spanish biscuits? Um, no, I think. A... Go on. Those nice biscuits, you know, like the coconut biscuits. Yeah. I think I, nice. I can see him dunking one, dunk someone in into his uh, into his Yorkshire too. It's. Uh, Mark is a Lotus fan, to be fair. I was. That's exactly what I was going to say. Lotus. Oh, They're elite. They are. Well, it's right. too many thrills for him. I think. <laughs> Thinking about. Him grabbing everyone by two hands. Is there only like double handed biscuit? He likes Basically. he grabs every player with his wagon wheel. Wagon wheels and maybe a two party, party party wagon rings wheel on every single finger. <laughs> <laughs> they do chocolate party rings now. Do they? Oh, he might be all over. Shall, shall I ask my missus what Sp- what biscuits are Spanish? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Trying to think. Jaffa cake, yeah. or is that going into a controversial is it biscuit? Oh, God, that's another that's another <laughs> can of fatty <laughs> words. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like whenever you go like abroad, the biscuits in the, like the supermarkets of Spain like, are pretty shit, aren't they? Like, like, proper like, although bo- I do like pack of bourbons for about four pound fifty. Yeah, you know those ones that are like biscuit, but then with like chocolate that goes over the edge of the biscuit. I don't know what you even call them. They have them in France as well. They're dead good. I don't know what they're called, but they're dead. I really like them. In what France. shape are they? Shape. Digestive. Like like slightly rect, bit more of a rectangle than a square. Oh but only yeah, slightly. yeah yeah yeah. Um... I know what you mean. They're made by Lou, L U. Lou Biscuit. I used to call them a Lou Biscuits, but I don't know what they actually. Uh, I'm going to have to find it now. I'm sure I know what you mean. Uh, Lou Biscuits. Oh, yeah, I know, they, I know what you mean. Le Petit Choc, yeah, with the little geezer on. Yeah. Well, he sounds, like, nice he sounds like me in Brussels trying to speak to, um, yeah. to <laughs> people. Do you like French. to party? Yeah. <laughs> 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 My French is actually too bad, but these no, very taking a piece. 
Sorry if anyone's yeah. just listening on a uh, yeah, bio. Le, le petit yeah. chocolat. Uh, if you look at Lou. Crunchy biscuits stuck with milk yeah. chocolate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've written in English. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, just out of interest, lads, what are your favourite biscuits? Uh, I always go for a pack of bourbons, to be fair. Chocolate yeah. bourbons. But I'll, I'll scrap it. Uh, like cookies, like Maryland cookies, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, love a cookie. Easy money, ain't they? Yeah. Or, or Rios. Uh, my, always, yeah. I'm easy. My first biscuit love was caramel digestives, I think. Oh, what a show. Yeah. Oh, what a biscuit. Mm. The I'm, only reason I go for bourbons, like Sainsbury's, pack of bourbons, fat 35p. Oh, are you laughing? Like, you know, in, the, in the current climate, you know, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? <laughs> Is it I used to put custard creams in the fridge. Oh, Hear me out. Because yeah, I'd go custard cream over a bourbon, so you've got me. I'm listening. Yeah. And then I'd dip it in my tea, but the contrast of the warm liquid in the cold centre was like, excellent. <laughs> if anyone's got custard, anyone, <laughs> custard, cr- custard creams at home, have a go. I mean, I'm partial to a finger as well. I had some... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, oh, my word. <laughs> I had mint chocolate fingers this week. Lid, lid <laughs> no, I mint, I, I'm a big fan of the mint mint chocolate. It's a mint chocolate fingers. Yeah, yeah. that's not, not an innuendo. That up, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, well, I was, uh, I was no about to say with it with the custard creams <laughs> and the hot drinks, I was going to go, oh, we'll try that yeah. at the sleep out. And then you went, well, that, I love to be fair, that <laughs> scream. <laughs> we'll try that at the sleep out. Well. <laughs> Walter confirmed the signing of Nacho Fernandez and someone quoted it. I'm partial to a finger. There you go. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's, <laughs> No, I, I, um, what, I had some white chocolate ones the other day. I like the, um, I like custard cre- cookies though, man. Any cookies, but chocolate digestives, yeah. you can't go wrong. I don't like stuff like a rich tea. I don't like. I just like those nice biscuit tea. We've uh, want... quick, very quick tangent. We we cooked some like cookie brownies at work today. We've got like a wood burner with like a cooking top, and Fucking like we cooked Busy some brownies in it too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I had customers I was, in whilst they're um... in there. I was like, oh, dangerous game. Yeah. <laughs> I was somewhere the other day with loads of free biscuits next to the tea thing, and there was Yorkies as well. I was like, "Oh, I'll take the chocolate oh, bar." Yorkie. The yeah, it was a Yorkie biscuit. It was you know that thing like where you don't expect the taste. It was like a Yorkie looked like a Yorkie, and it was a biscuit inside. And well, I think when there's you know there's that thing where if you don't expect the taste, however, then you don't like. Aren't it. Yorkies biscuits anyway? Like inside, no, no, they're, no, they're no solid, solid chocolate. Solid yeah, chocolate really. they, class. they do a yeah, biscuit really and raisin one. Not allowed like for it. women. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, we have them at work, and whoever's listening who, who I work with will realise why where all these biscuits have gone. Um, <laughs> gold bars. Oh, oh, mate, gold bars are elite, super. man. As soon as I were put in the drawer, they were fucking gone. They were straight put them in the fridge. They're good in the fridge. Because oh, yeah. you can bite each end yeah, as well and use it as a straw. You can do that with your finger as well. You Like fingers, you'd bite, bite two ends and then for your tea. What the Point, hell? Man. Nice. What? This is mad. These are some mad hacks. <laughs> I'm a fruity guy. <laughs> yeah. How do you even find that out about a gold bar being a straw? Tested it. <laughs> yeah, it's Tested just it's a tight and trusted method with like any like do it with a Twix. You can do it with a Kit Kat. Like have a go. Like, but you, there's a there's a bouncy? fine balance. Uh, I, 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 Taking them out of celebrations, aren't they this year, Dave? Good the shit. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> but then the celebrations have released a bounty only box. Oh, that might be why they've done right. it. That's oh, a lead, Dave man. buzzing. That is a lead. Uh, so if anyone is wondering what to get me for Christmas, there we go. We should probably move on. We've been talking about this for far too long. Uh, this is the most passionate we've been in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, the last hour in his last 10 minutes. Final question is from Paul Somerset Wolf. Um, yeah, legend. I, I see that he always comments on the videos as well and always sends well wishes on Twitter. So big thanks to that, Paul, mate. I hope you keep him well. Um, he looks like Lapate is going to be given funds to strengthen in the window. What do you think his main priority will be in terms of position? It's got to be, for me, right back and striker. If you can only, but I think in the ideal world, centre back, right back, striker. I think. But well, sure. Matt, you Matt had a good shout, Finn, um, mm. in, in regards to an ex Lopetegui player. Not quite the position we need, but Regulon. Mm. So yeah, is he, athle- is he on loan it? No, he's See, at Spurs I, thought, still. I thought he was out on loan, but Matt reckons I thought he's at Atletico, first. isn't he? We might be able to. Um, I feel like I packed him on feet. Oh, yeah, he's on, he's on loan. Um, oh, I was trying to hijack it. But no, yeah, yeah. Well, then again, we yeah. don't need another. We're, we're pretty stacked there, aren't we? If he was right footed, it'd be great. He's played but, one game, though, so there's a good, good chance. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> he was excellent. No, it's severe with him. And there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no way you're going to go and get Jesus Navas. Um, well, 
Here's one for you. Speaking about Adama that we've just spoke about. Remember when he took a fast Premier League winger and turned him into a right back? Adama at right back, anyone? You don't have to buy one? Mm, no, nah, 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 I don't think nah, you could do it. Will, I, I'd want to see it maybe in like the Gillingham game. Give it a go. But in a five back, no. maybe, but not in a four. Yeah. I mean, in that, it'd be chaos in a four. It'd be brilliant. We'll give it a go. But mm. yeah. Do that against Gillingham. Just a flat back three, like a proper three, four, three. Just go for it. Yeah. Like that mm. Cardiff game where they played Adama, yeah, yeah. Adama and Vinagre. Adama and Vinagre. Mm. Love that. That was class. That was class. Um, gents, that's all for this week. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's probably going to be two or three weeks before we do another podcast unless there's stuff that breaks, um, which I'm sure Dave will cover anyway in more bite-sized videos. But it's going to be a little bit sad, really. Uh, I'm sure we'll do one before the Gillingham game, though. Uh, podcast before the Gillingham game. But it might give us a bit of a break, a welcome break. <laughs> I've been a little bit sick about talking about Wolves recently, and it's just because it just frustrates you, doesn't it? Like it's it's the same problems that keep occurring, and you know, I feel like we just go on and on and on about the same things. But still, appreciate the support and the viewers, nonetheless. And um, I couldn't think of of two and three other blokes to, to share it with. So big thanks to you two as well. Thank you very much. It's the nicest That's thing I've said to you yeah, lot I ever. Say. I don't think, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But don't forget the Molyneux Sleep Hour is on Friday. Um, so, if, like I've said before, if you have got any spare change you'd be, you're willing to part ways with, then please do it by donating by the Just Giving page. It's in the description down below. If we if we get to 200%, we'll give Matt some fingers. Yeah. We'll I buy, will, him, buy him some fingers. Yeah. yeah. I will have fingers <laughs> at the sleep out. Um <laughs> Dave, where can people find you should they wish to follow you? At Dave as a party on Twitter and Instagram public of course hey! and, uh, the old linkedin as well i had a good few connections on linkedin this week as always finn where can people find you should they wish to follow you i'll sign out for me and the boy here he is morning finn it's mike dean oh you can't see him here he is oh, <laughs> he, he looks like steve 52 from bilston <laughs> yeah that's literally. a good idea channel later <laughs> Hi Finn. Um but yes, from me and Mike, uh Finn is on uh Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Um and yeah, gonna miss you all. Lots of love. Sure, we'll keep in touch. I'm M Cooper Rights on Twitter, um Matt Cooper on LinkedIn, um M Cooper Rights on Instagram as well. I'm on public now. Gone public Matt Cooper Bites on YouTube. Uh, Matt Cooper Bites on YouTube. Um any Twitter blue subscribing um in the pipeline for you, Dave or Finn? I, I what, don't need what to even it. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, uh, that was a nice smooth close, but we're going to go on a tangent again. Um, I thought it was like if you were verified, you had to pay it to keep it, but is it oh, just oh, you yeah. have to pay? Yeah, yeah, but it's not as long as you're official. You probably will you don't soon. Have to pay. Hmm. He, I don't think he knows what he's doing, does he, at the moment? Bless him. He don't he's know just, what you're hmm. doing. He's a backwards twat anyway, and I can't stop the <laughs> uh, But that's one for uh, another week. Um, <laughs> uh, we are talking walls across all social platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, the most important one, LinkedIn. And until next time, look after yourself. And if we don't speak to you before, have a wonderful Christmas. And, yeah, take care. And thanks for the support.